Hello, this is John Upchurch with Paragon Consulting, and today I have a special guest, Bill Casey. He's a friend and co-worker here at Paragon Consulting, and he is going to be showing us how to get started with the Federated Experience Manager, and he's going to be giving us a demo of importing Sitecore content into a site that is not managed by Sitecore. So with, without any further ado, here's Bill. Thanks, John, for having me on the show. Um, as John mentioned, this is a little quick demo of how an external application can use Sitecore content without moving the whole application into Sitecore. Um, so what we're looking at on the screen now is just a basic one-page MVC application. I'll just take a scroll here. you got the lorem and the bacon ipsum. Um, and I'll just show you the code here. And we'll see in the code um, that all that content is pretty much static. Uh, or not pretty much, it all is static. Just got a quick peek there. And what I'm going to demonstrate here is how to include this external site into Sitecore without importing it, or let the site pull content from Sitecore, I should say. Um, to do that, we're using, for this demo, we're using uh, Sitecore 8 Update 2. And we're going to go ahead and fire up the Federated Experience Manager. And this is a, a pretty cool tool. Um, and it's going to be picking up some popularity I can see coming in the near future. Um, this is the dashboard here. Uh, you'll see I have two sites that I've been kind of playing with. And for this quick demo, we're going to be looking at this MVC consumer site. Um, throwing a new site to track and manage is uh, fairly simple. Okay, so we open up, we can see the details of this one. All you need to do is give it a name as soon as it comes up. Uh, when you add a new site, all you need to do is give it a name, uh, give it a domain. And what that's going to do is it generates this little beacon script for you. And you take this beacon script, you paste it over into your head of your page, uh, either an MVC or a web forms, depending on what you're working with. And then once that's pasted in, you would do a publish. Let me go ahead and do that. It's not going to hurt anything. Go ahead and do a publish of that site. And it will be ready to start accepting uh, Sitecore content for you. Um, first off, I do want to point out that the, uh, the Federated Experience Manager, when working with external sites, uses uh, cross-site scripting. Um, and Specifically, it uses the CORS engine, the CORS engine, uh, for to handle that cross-site scripting. And when you add a site using the uh, the Federated Experience Manager interface, for some reason it doesn't um, add in the rules for you. So you need to go into your content tree under System, Marketing Control Panel, Federated Experience Manager, and just click on your site. Uh, make sure your primary domain is set, and then you're going to add in and edit, add in a rule to match that domain. And this says that uh, anything coming from this domain is allowed to use the resources. Um, if this uh, rule isn't in place, uh, it's it's not going to work when you try to view the live version of the site. Um, without this rule being in place, the page editor uh, will still work, but once you save and publish, you're not going to be able to see it on the live site. And that's something that one of the things that I ran into while testing. Um, so remember to throw in your edit, your marketing rule, or I'm sorry, matching rule uh, to match the domain that's going to be requesting stuff from Sitecore. So we're, that being said, we're going to flip back over here to our MVC. And once that loads up, we're going to go ahead and open in the experience editor. And this is a uh, similar utility to the page editor that you're used to working with with Sitecore. Um, options are a little bit different. And you can see that we have the same site loading up that, uh, that we had over here, this uh, external MVC application that is not hosted by Sitecore. As soon as that loads up, then you have this uh, editor toolbar that has some options for you that are kind of fun to play with. Um, for this demo, we're going to check out the add placeholder. Um, with Sitecore Update 2, which we're working with, 
Uh, it seems a little bit kind of hokey. You have to kind of press it twice to get it to enable. But then you can just grab any element within the existing page, and it gives you options. Um, you can add before, replace, or it's hidden right now, but it should say, you, it, it does say uh, add it after, um, if you wanted to just add another item after the thing. Um, for this uh, specific demo, we're just going to go ahead and replace it. And you go ahead and give it a name. We're going to call it new header. And then just select that parent website. Um, if for some reason this parent doesn't have something like this listed, uh, verify that your license supports uh, FXM. Uh, that was one of the big things that I ran into with testing initially, that I had an older license that didn't have FXM uh, enabled with it, and this wasn't popping up. And we found that by check, uh, checking the uh, Sitecore logs. Um, there's a, uh, an FXM log now that uh, just said that the license was missing. So if you don't have a parent, uh, check your logs and make sure your license supports this. Um, maybe in the future, uh, Sitecore might add some functionality that says license missing, uh, but that's neither here nor there. We'll go ahead and hit OK. And you'll see you have the same kind of familiar placeholder that you're used to with working in the Sitecore page editor. You go ahead and click Add here. And this brings you into your layouts folder in your Sitecore tree. And we're working with uh, MVC. So we're playing with renderings within this site. I'm going to go ahead and go to my main site. And I have this main site header which is an MVC rendering, and there's our dark helmet guy. We go ahead and hit save, and that's where our page is going to look like. So if you're happy with that, go ahead and hit publish. We'll go ahead and do a smart publish. And then if we flip back over here to the real site, the live site, See that the header was replaced, and it now has our site core header with dark helmet. And what this does behind the scenes is when the client browser makes a request uh, to the website, it's going to notice this beacon script. And this beacon script calls back to Sitecore and says, hey, uh, I need some content. And Sitecore is going to throw back some HTML that corresponds to all of the items that you put into it. So in this case, we put in a, a header. So it generated the HTML for the header and threw it back and replaced it where we told it to. Um, we can throw in all sorts of other controls as well. It's not limited to the header. Um, if we give you an example here, we're going to throw something in in this beacon ipsum. We're going to add it before this time. And we're going to call this uh, body content. Click on the same parent. Add in another rendering. So a call to action container, which lists uh, collections of items. And you see we have little dark helmet images for item one, item two, and item three, along with some generic content that's specified within the template. And that's basically all you need to do is start throwing in uh, Sitecore content into a non-Sitecore website. Um, and this opens up the door for lots of possibilities with, uh, if you're working with clients that have multiple sites and they don't wanna kind of pull them all over at once, you can have those sites utilize Sitecore content without importing everything and doing the big import of getting uh, all the data into Sitecore. Um, so I think that's about it for this one. Uh, thanks for checking it out. Thanks, Bill, and we appreciate you taking the time to run us through this. This uh, definitely looks like a great tool and looks like something we'll be using a lot in the future. So thanks again, and thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon. Goodbye.